I solved this technical task for interview two years ago and I didn't get the job. After improving my skills and knowledge for the past couple of years, here's how I would rewrite the whole thing. Now let's jump straight into this. So this is the requirements of the technical test or task, whatever you want to call it. It's a legacy API functionality with data structure that can be awkward, can be awkward for the API client and the front end application to consume. The specification is that to build a service that returns relevant information for the brands and can potentially a very large amount of information. Occasionally this information is useful, but for most use cases, it's too much to handle at once. Your task is to provide endpoints to access discrete pieces of information at one at once via HTTP GET endpoints. And these are the endpoints they want, get brand by ID, get product for brand by brand ID, get all stores for brand by brand ID, get all stores for a product by product ID. So the relationship here are kind of obvious. They have brands, each of the brands has products, each of the brands also has stores, and each of the products have a relationship because of the brand, they have a relationship to the stores. And they provided a JSON here, which we can inspect. So these are the brands. And we can see all the stores IDs. Let's find some products and we have products here as well. Now here we have some products, perfect. And then we should also have stores. Yeah. Some of the, th these are some tips that I provided. Some of the brands and products are consolidated, which means that the product is available at multiple brands and stores. So a single product may belong to multiple brands as well as it's the true parent. When returning the brand's products, the consolidated products should also be returned. There's no need to spend a ton of time on this, blah, blah, blah. That's just for the test. They will be looking for unit tests or whatever kind of tests. And each endpoint should return as much detail as it's likely to be useful for a client. So those are the requirements. I have written this already and it already works. I've built this using the Node.js and this is an express server returning all the endpoints. We can see all the endpoints in here. So you have brands, brand ID, you have stores. The biggest thing that I think I can improve is the folder structure and the separating the business logic from the application logic from the infrastructure logic. And I think that's really important whenever writing any applications, knowing where all of these are gonna live and that's what I want to focus on with this um, refactoring. So we have the server here. We have all the endpoints here in this file. We have a start file which just starts the server. And then we have, I've used Knex or Knex for the database. It also has the migrations, which I've already run. So I have a server locally with all the migration zones, which builds all the tables and it's using PostgreSQL for my local database. We have models, which are each of the models for our um, entities. And then we have seed. This basically just gets the JSON data and seeds it into the tables so we can then get the data from our tables. And this is how I've decided to use it. Instead of filtering the JSON, I decided I'm gonna use Knex. Knex. I'm gonna call it Knex. <laughs> cool. Now the I'm gonna just start and create new folder structure. So now I can move some of the files around, then I'm gonna have to rewrite all of them. Now this kind of suggests and guides us where we should put application logic, where should entities logic live, or business rules around the entities and the infrastructure logic. And this is, by the way, following the clean architecture principles or some of them, I, people call it pragmatic clean architecture.
Cool, so now what I've done here is I've moved all of the handlers for these um, endpoints to different folders. And here are all of them. This is basically just a handler that does something and returns the response according to the, to the requirements. So this makes this file much more um, clean and we can define new endpoints here in the future and each of the handlers are now separated into its own files. Cool, so looks like all of our handlers only have logic around getting the data and returning which is um, connected to Express. So this is all good. This is all infrastructure logic. Let's move on now to our controllers. Okay, I think I've sorted all of this out now. So I've divided all of the controllers into it, their separate files. And in here, they only do one thing and they get all brands. Controller, for example, gets all the brands. And it does some graph fetched and operations here that transforms the files. I'm gonna start now moving the, log the next logic from here into the entities because I don't want the the controllers to have any knowledge of next they just want to get all or get by id or just do all the stuff in somewhere else which is gonna communicate with next here i just want to have application logic for example this transformation would be application logic Okay, so now I've moved all of the next logic into the entities. And this is where we have the where statements, the limits and offsets and whatnot, and left joins or anything that's contextual to the library we're using for our entities. Now I see that this mapping is used in a couple of places. So I'm just gonna abstract this into our helpers. Okay, so now I'm pretty happy with where all the logic lives. If I run this, I'm probably gonna have some kind of issues, but let's try. Okay, so I think I sorted all my errors. It was mainly uh, module JS and common JS. I've used both. Um, there we go. Now let's try and make a request to one of our points. Just want to see. Okay. There we go. Now it's all working. We can get all the brands. Let's make another request. Um, where are all my routes? Let's get a brand by ID. Awesome, I have brand by ID. Now this should return the products in those stores, I think. Okay, there are some few works, but I'm not really gonna go into the actual logic in here. I just wanted to refactor this in the best way I can. Okay, I got into the first problem. I'm trying to figure out why this ID doesn't show up in this handler. So I have, if I console log the rec query here and params, they both exist. But when they send them here, They're both undefined. OK, 
Okay, so I found what my issue was. I apparently was calling the same function over and over again. So all of the endpoints now work. We got all the code divided in its own different files. I like the state of this now. The only thing that's missing are some JS docs, like I said. Now we have the JS doc um, intelligence here, which that's why, because I'm not using TypeScript, I wanted to use JS docs for each of the functions. So when they're used, you can see all what the parameter types are and what are you sending because there's no types on this anyways. Cool, um, I'm happy with this. So the biggest takeaway here is separate concerns by dividing the responsibilities of your handlers and controllers. This means that any logic that's connected to the infrastructure should live in the infrastructure folder. Any application logic should live in the application folder. And any business rules as well should also live in the controller, like transforming data and stuff like that should all live in the application. I mean, you can watch my clean architecture video as well if you really want to understand each of the responsibilities for those files are. But I like how this looks now. I'm happy with this. I'm not going to go through the test as well. They're probably all fail now because I moved everything around. But yeah, basically now all the files look much cleaner. You can make sense but everything is going on in the file. You can see, for example, this file is getting the all products, it's passing a page number and limit as well. So we can get all products for this page and limit by the number. And if there's no product or the product length is zero, then return null. And then that's handled somewhere else. We don't really care how that is handled. And then in the actual handlers, we can see that we are sending different data, different responses back to the response based on what the controllers return. So yeah, that's all I, what I wanted to do here. I, like I said, I'm going to focus on dividing all the responsibilities and all the files into its own separate folder structure. And I think I've achieved, I've achieved this. There's, there's probably still room for this to, to be improved. Um, I know in Express you can use other ways to um, do the routing. Now with this, for example, in the future, if you want to move from Express to API Gateway in AWS and AWS Lambdas, this can be easily done. All the responsibilities and all the endpoints are divided in their own files and these can be easily compiled into their own functions to be able to run in Lambda. Thank you very much for watching. That's pretty much it for the video. I hope you learned something. If you have any feedback, put it down in the comments. I really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day. Happy coding. Bye.